walk into Macclesfield. We've not been yet, have we? We haven't, no. And uh, Fran's got loads of parcels to <laughs> yeah. dispatch at her couriers. I can't weave quick enough at the, at the moment to keep up with orders, which is not, I'm not complaining, it's lovely. <laughs> So most of them are going to America, aren't they? Two to America, one is to a local lady. You're in Leicester, so in UK. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So Macclesfield's a town neither of us have been to before. There's nothing open, as you would guess, you know, in terms of churches or museums or whatever. Uh, so we're uh, just going to have a wander around and see what it looks like. Some beautiful old buildings, though. Yeah, some lovely stuff. The Hovis Mill, isn't there here? Which, you know, obviously, was for the original Hovis Bread Company. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, really lovely old houses. And, uh, sorry, I'm skip. Skip surfing. <laughs> skip surfing. I can't she needs resist. A, she needs a plant pot. I need some plant pots. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, some really, really beautiful old architecture. And there's a silk museum as well here, but that's going to be closed, unfortunately. So, never mind, we'll just have a walk and enjoy the views. Found a nice park just down the road from the boat. A chance for the dogs to have a good run around and play their new game that they've discovered. <laughs> Archie found a ball on the side of the canal a couple of weeks ago and uh, Come on. he loves nothing more than to chase after it and bring it back to us. He's never been much bothered with balls in the past, has he? No. Uh, they, they both really, really love it. Yeah, um, Jess loves it as well, doesn't she? Where we're moored, we're on a floating pontoon, so we have to just sort of get them on leads to take them out from there. But uh, they need a good run around, so this is ideal for them. Beautiful old-fashioned park. The rose beds, there's even an aviary over there, but there's no birds in it anymore, fortunately. But yeah, lovely. And we have read the notices and we are allowed to have dogs off the lead. <laughs> Before, Before anybody we got says any them. comments about keeping the dogs on oh, the yeah, lead. Oh yeah, we had a very nasty comment yesterday, didn't we? About <laughs> letting the dogs run wild in fields and that. Yes. And I see a problem if there's no livestock in the field or horses and there wasn't so. And many other people commented on how well behaved the dogs are and they will come to us when we call. Um, we don't ever let them bother anybody else, so we won't be putting the dogs on the lead all the time, whatever anybody thinks. No, so there. <laughs> come on, Archie, come on. Come on, fetch it, fetch the ball. Bring it here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Not quite grasped the idea of bringing the ball to us. Oh dear, that was a very... <laughs> <laughs> You'll never make a picture. <laughs> Crafty Archie. Here we are at the Hovis Mill, where they used to make the Hovis bread. And for those who are not familiar of Hovis, really famous bread manufacturer in the UK, but now turned into flats. And uh, the building actually fronts onto the canal, so I guess in the old days there'd have been boats turning up with flour and uh, also taking bread away with them, maybe, I don't know. But uh, yeah, really old building, lovely, lovely building.
So we're on our way to Marple now. I think we've got a journey of about five miles today, which is the uh, most we've done for such a long time. Um, and it's another glorious day, isn't it? We've got a, a well deck full of rubbish, five weeks of beer bottles and wine bottles and two bags of domestic rubbish to get rid of. There's just been nowhere to get rid of anything along here, is there? It's been really difficult, so yeah. that's fine. But we've had a notification through from CRT that they're aiming, hopefully in July, to open this canal up. And July being the main uh, holiday season, so all the hire boats will be out, maybe. Um, in the meantime, they're keeping this closed. The locks are still staying closed at either end. But they've said within the next couple of weeks, they're going to open it just for two or three days to allow everybody to get where they wanted to be. So we've had to make a bit of a rapid decision, haven't we? Yeah. So we've, we've got a... We've made the decision to go back on ourselves if they open up the locks for two days, which is a 20 mile journey ish. Uh, it depends where we are. If we're at Bugsworth Base and then it's 27 miles. Um, we don't particularly want to go through the Marple flight and end up back in Manchester. But if we have to, then we have to, if we don't have enough time to get back behind us. So we're really not bothered either way, but preferably that way. And uh, ending up on, probably ending up going on the Langoswin for the summer. It's just a, a risk that if we assume they're going to open it in July, you can bet your bottom dollar they won't. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that would be nice actually for us to have another three, three weeks along here to do our walking and stuff. But if they then decide not to open, is the chimney okay? Yeah, you're a bit my side. <laughs> if they decide then not to open in July for any reason, we'll just be here all summer. Yeah. And as lovely as it is, it's there's yeah. not that much that we can do here. It's just the uncertainty of it all, so we just uh, we'll cut our losses and get off as soon as we can. Yeah. I mean, at worst, it's going to be two or three long days travelling, isn't it, really? It's yeah. not a pro we did 18 miles once in one day, I think, on the Thames, didn't we? Yeah, but we had the river flow taking us down as well, didn't we? So. It's horsefly season. <laughs> They're very persistent and they give you a nasty bite. They actually tear the skin, don't they? They've got serrated pinches that I actually... I don't know what they've got with them. It hurts. Evil. <laughs> we've run out of uh, skin so... Avon skin so soft was the thing that we found on the first year on the boat, which was really, really good at keeping these bugs at uh, bay. At bay? At bay? bay. Keeping them Keep away. The away. So I've made some coconut oil with citronella oil in it and we're trying that out. Let's see. But, I don't know, you've been bitten. I think I've been bitten on my foot already. I think they like the smell of the coconut oil. <laughs> you can just see Manchester in the distance over there. Oh yeah. We're moored up in our old time favourite spot. A beautiful view over there. Unfortunately, the water's a bit lower than this time last year. So we're having to gangplank it. Jess, come on. Archie, come on. <laughs> one dog gets it, one dog doesn't. Come on, Arch. Think about it. Jess, come on. Come on. Come on, Jess. Come on, Arch. Hmm. 
On here. Good boy. <laughs> Come on, Jess. Come on, friend. <laughs> Well, we're just off on a short walk. Another fantastic day. And we are blessed, aren't we, are we blessed. Francis? I yes. Think this is going to cool down again tomorrow, but I don't think it's going to be bad. We're just making the most of it. And where we are, well, we're going to move the boat probably <laughs> today. Because where we are, there's about 130 geese and uh, honking and fighting and it's not only the noise when you open the window the side hatch they're almost in the boat you can't swing your arm around to get the side hatch door come without them jumping up and splashing you well I'm scared anyway so we're walking the towpath in search of somewhere a bit more quiet and it's absolutely stunning We've been surrounded by honeybees just by the boat. We'll show you some footage. There's a pyracanthum, yeah. um, hedge plant overgrown from a garden, and it is smothered in bees. And the blackberry flowers are just opening now. They're also, just as they're opening, covered with bees. And it's a big day today because um, it's just the right weather for picking elderflowers. You're supposed to pick them on a dry sunny day so today is the day i'm making elderflower cordial rather than champagne because we haven't got the uh, big containers to keep fizzy champagne in so, oh that's a pity <laughs> <laughs> it's not very alcoholic anyway no, elderflower champagne. about five percent Just, isn't it yeah. but elderflower cordial is lovely and um, it's very nice added to a little drop Come of gin. In. So that's what we're going to do. Thank Stay. you. We're smiling for the camera too. Stay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's a happy chappy on it's his bike. not always aggravation between boaters and cyclists, is it? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's what we're off to do. Pick some flowers and uh, walk the dogs. What's happening, Fran? elderflower cordial mm -hmm. not champagne because to make champagne you have to have a big like five litre container and bottles to put it in with sealed lids that don't explode and I haven't got all that but the cordial is brilliant and you can either mix it with fizzy water or gin or uh, I knew there was a method in your madness you can add a little drop to wine as well so uh, we just figured we'd make the cordial and that's fine right. so like everything else i've done a bit of research and I've, this is an amalgamation of everybody's recipes so you've got we have done this before though haven't yeah we? we have i mean some recipes call for 15 some call for 25 elderflower heads basically you could pick them on a sunny dry day um smell them because some elderflower bushes actually or trees don't smell so good so you need to pick one that smells floral and lemony rather than nasty and pick them when they're just about to open or just opening not not going brown because they taste nasty nasty so i'm going to just pick these over make sure there's no bugs on them and put the flowers not the green bits in a pan i've got 20 heads um with one and a half liters of boiling water the juice and the zest which i'm going to grate off of two lemons and that just gets left overnight Old school juicing, Fred. Yep, nothing that requires any power on this boat except for manual power. There we go, look at that. So here we have the elderflowers, lemon zest, lemon juice. The flowers were just perfect. If I can find some to show you, we've still got... Um, the buds are not quite open on these um, 
obviously some are open but you don't want them much more than that because they lose their fresh flavour beautiful flowers so that's done lemon juice lemon zest and uh, one liter and a half of water which has just been boiled for a couple of minutes to make sure it's properly sterile So this is the spot we've chosen and uh, we actually moored in this exact same spot this time last year, well July, August last year and uh, if turn around show you what's behind, not too shabby eh? That's the next day now and it's a really good job I picked the elderflowers yesterday because today is cold, rainy and the elderflowers are not good so we did it right. These have steeped overnight and smell absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I now need to sieve this into another pan. So everything has to be sterilized. I don't use any chemical sterilizing um, tablets or anything. Everything's just been boiled. I've got a strip of muslin or netting or whatever you want to use. That's been boiled. This has been boiled, my hands are clean. Um, I've got some bottles sterilising in the oven, they've been washed in soapy water and they're just drying in a low oven and they will be sterile. So we really just have to sieve this now. I'm hoping the pan's going to be big enough. It smells wonderful. That's fine. Then I've got to add one kilogram of sugar and just gently melt the sugar and cook it for a few minutes. And once that's happened, I'm gonna pour it through the sterilized funnel into the sterilized bottles and let it cool. And that's it. I just didn't want to take any chances. So I've actually re-sterilized this muslin. I'm gonna double filter this just cause I think there's a few little bits of flowers and maybe a couple of bugs in there flies that I've missed so I'm just going to pour it through here again. Smells fantastic. And you can just dilute this to have with fizzy water I guess about one in five it depends on taste. Just in ordinary water, you can put it into wine or sparkling wine. Then it really is like elderflower champagne. Or as I said, the favorite way here is just a little drop in a, in a glass of gin is gorgeous. <laughs> 